Hello? Hey, is J. Widener? Yes, it is. Hi, Jay. It's Robert. How you doing? Good. We are live on the air with millions of people waiting to hear what you have to say to DJ. How's it going? It's going good. Hang on just one second. All right. I'm back. It's going good. How are you? How's everybody? Good. I'm good. We just had uh, Sarah Nash on the show. She's going to be with George next week. And are you producing George's stuff now, Guy? Is, 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 is I am. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we're we're it's like we did six degrees of Jay Widener a little bit earlier because of that. <laughs> so uh, t- tell people about that because this is a big shift for you. You went from being kind of a uh, an indie filmmaker, raconteur, mythologist, and you're still some of that. But now you're. You're working with Gaim, and you're producing uh, this programming. And a lot of it is quite interesting, to be honest with you. I think so. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, uh, you know, I'm producing uh, now five shows. We have a new show coming out. Um, I guess it'll be six. Sh- no, five shows. We have a new show coming out uh, next Monday called Wisdom Teachings with David Wilcock, which at first I was kind of dubious about uh, doing a show with him. And uh, but uh, he was very enthusiastic, and as I've been shooting his show, I've now realized that actually it's a mind blower. So I encourage people if you really want to get your mind blown, you know, to wait about six weeks and then binge on about ten of them at once. And I think if you binge on it like like you do with Netflix, I right. think you'll uh, be in for a real eye opener. I've had my eye open to a lot of things that. Uh, that I had not that that I'd been closed to before, and uh, so uh, if you can blow my mind, that's uh, that's saying something. And uh, he's definitely blowing my mind. So there's a lot of go. We have uh, Regina Meredith has two shows, uh, Open Minds and Healing Matrix, both are which extremely cutting edge. Uh, she's bringing a lot of uh, incredible stuff to the forefront, and it's it's essentially you know the rebirth of a mystery school, only it's on uh, it's like a, a Netflix mystery school. Right. And do yeah. they have, uh, like, presence on Roku or any of these other devices? Yep, we have Roku, uh, Verizon's coming, uh, Cox Cable, um, uh, really expanding outwards. Uh, we're available, you know, on iPad, every, every kind of instrument that there is. And um, I've taken to watching it uh, on my iPad at night, you know, laying in my bed while I'm reading. And uh I find find it you know incredibly comforting, and uh, you know we have over five thousand titles. We got uh, movies, we've got TV shows, we've got anything that's esoteric in, in nature. We're trying to uh, put into our library so that there's a one stop shop for everybody. And uh, I guarantee it, uh, no matter who you are, you will be transformed if you if you join GuyMTV.com. Uh, I can tell you. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I went on the uh, site today and. Uh, it's a really wide array of content, and you'll find, you know, people like time traveling dentists to uh, yeah. to people that are talking about genetically modified organisms and food. So there's seems to be something for everyone. How has this impacted you in terms of your own personal development? Because you were, you know, kind of a lone wolf, independent figure, voice in the wilderness, not afraid to speak your mind. Uh, now you're, you know, you're you're doing a, you know, a, a nine to five or whatever your hours are. Has this has this changed your thinking or your output or your input? How's it impacted you? Well, I'm not really much of a corporate animal. Um, never have been. Never will be. Uh, so that's probably the biggest adjustment that I have to make in my life is I wish it was nine to five. It's more like seven to eight, you know, (laughs) and, uh, uh, but I'm used to that because I ran my own business. So long hours don't bother me. Uh, but the corporate world is not an easy thing for me to navigate because I'm such a maverick and I've been called out, you know, several times and I've been, I was told by the vice president that I'm the chief disruptor in the company, which I took as a, as a badge of honor, by the way. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, when I first took the, uh, job, I told the owner, who's actually a very, very smart individual, um, that I wasn't really cut out for the corporate world and I wasn't sure how I could conform to the corporate world. And I wanted him to know that up front. 
And then he said to me, uh, I don't want you to conform to the corporate world. I want the corporate world to conform to you. So I decided to take that on as my, uh, you know, my clothing, I guess. And <laughs> so I'm trying to convert this thing into thinking like I am instead of having it convert me into thinking like it is. I like that. So convert to I am versus guy am or something like that. Yeah, it's uh, and, and, and since everybody here that works here is for the most part just regular human beings, um, you know, they were a little bit stunned by the changes in programming that I brought when I came here, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of protests and things. But now that they're actually watching the programming, they're changing. So it's kind of interesting to watch, you know, perfectly straight people who have no uh, idea about the esoteric hardly at all, you know, suddenly getting into time-traveling dentists and, uh, you know, crazy, wacky things that are actually not so crazy and wacky once you start thinking about it. Right, right. So dissipative structures at work here, which is always a, an interesting and good thing. So how are you liking Colorado? And the last time we talked, by the way, we talked about we talked about some crazy stuff. We were talking about, you know. Uh, we were on the night before, the night that, uh, it was the that night James before. Holmes, yeah. Yeah. It was that same night. Yeah, James Holmes went and killed everybody in, in about uh, 20 miles from here. And uh, if he even did it, we don't even know. But right. he did it on the Batman, the night that Batman opened, ironically. And for, I was headed towards that theater on that day to go see it. But he did it at midnight, and I was going at 7 o'clock. I didn't go. Uh, I was going to go. Um, well, you were talking I was so sh Go ahead. You were talking to but, me. Yeah, I was talking to you, yeah. Uh, one of those ironic things that actually somehow added to my credibility because all of a sudden everybody's talking about the fact that I was talking about the Dark Knight Rises and mind control, you know, just a few hours before the Joker went out there and, and mowed down a whole bunch of people. Right. And uh, so, I mean, I don't feel good about the people dying, but um, I, I personally, you know, I, I'm, I'm very suspicious about the whole thing and, and wonder if it wasn't done to kind of squash any kind of messages that the Dark Knight was giving out. So I don't know. I, I don't want to be too conspiratorial. I'm just saying that uh, coincidences always bother me. Yeah. So how are you? How are you liking Colorado? Well, Colorado is truly one of the most beautiful places on earth. So um, I, I really enjoy mountains and nature, and I'm having a nice time in Colorado. Unfortunately, the drought is beginning to ease off, so I, I'm not going through the tremendous dry period that was going on when I first moved here, starting to actually subside a little bit. And now I'm thankful for that because I come from Pacific Northwest. I'm really used to rain, and and so I miss it a lot. But uh, other than that, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. Um, I've got I just finished my new feature film, Shasta. It's coming out within the next few week, weeks. And uh, um, you know, running Guy on TV, it's been a, quite a quite a juggle to make a feature film while working a full time gig. But uh, um, if any of you out there are interested in checking out Guy on TV, um, you could do me and, and Robert a favor. Uh, go there. Go to the address guyamtv.com backslash Widener W E I D N E R, and then um, we can kind of keep track of how many people from this show are moving in to check us out. And I'd really appreciate. Yeah, yeah I'd I'd just have a link on the show page. Uh, yeah. Down. And what I'll do is I'll put the backslash widener in there as well. Jack. That'd be great. That'd yeah. be great. Well, let's talk about some current events. I, I really want to get your take on this uh, kind of psychedelic kabuki that's happening with North Korea. <laughs> what, 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 yeah. what is going on here? Well, um, you know, you know what, two or three years ago, China fired a missile off the West Coast near L.A. Right. Um, that was fortunately captured by a news camera. Uh, otherwise, it was completely denied by everybody, but it, it's obvious that they, uh, that they did it. Uh, also, about uh, two and a half years ago, there were uh, war games going on in the Pacific with about 100 U.S. warships, and in the middle of the war game, a Chinese submarine popped up out of nowhere uh, completely undetected, a nuclear submarine. Uh, th that was a provocation, and we know that China pretty much controls North Korea. And we know the little the little chubby psychopath that's running North Korea um, is probably very easily manipulated. He's never had a hard day in his entire life. Has been living the life of privilege, 
and he's you know easily manipulated into proving that he's a macho dude and uh, i think that it's china poking holes in our defenses seeing what we're made of and uh um using north korea as their proxy and i i i i think i doubt if anything is going to happen but at the same time the problem with these psychopaths like kim il jong un is that uh um that they don't care about human life and so uh and they and they 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 don't know fear but not because they're fearless they don't know fear because they don't understand emotion at all so he could do something completely crazy and wacky and um I, I don't think they have the missile delivery systems yet, but that doesn't mean that they aren't going to have it soon. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a jittery situation, and uh, frankly, um, I'm suspicious as to why we haven't taken him out. We have no problem taking out anybody else. Why is he still allowed to be going on and on with all this bellicose uh, talk? And so maybe there's elements within our government that actually like what he's doing. For some reason. Well, it's it's interesting that you say that because I actually saw a headline that was from a story I believe yesterday or the day before, uh, and the, in the Wall Street Times and um, the Wall Street News and and um, Wall Street Journal and and the headline was that with in a war with Korea, only a few, only a few people would die. I mean, that was really kind of the condensed headline. <laughs> and, I, and I thought to myself, why, why are we reading this? Exactly. You know, why, why is this being promulgated? And, you know, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, you know, all these you know, kind of establishment CIA-run newspapers. Oh, yeah. Why, why are we being force-fed this now in the midst of all of this? What, what are they trying to prep us for? I mean, you know, and then there's, then there's people like you and I on the outside who are trying to put the pieces together – and there, there are other people that are trying to do the same thing, and now we're spending time trying to, uh, you know, unlock this Chinese box. Yep. And, uh, uh, you know, this could all just be a big false flag, for all yeah. we know. We don't know. That's the thing anymore. And uh, just just some of the things that, that he did are really um, um, almost, uh, they're puerile and juvenile. Uh, the scene with the map on the wall with the lines drawn from Cuba to Denver to L.A. to Hawaii and to Austin, Texas. Right. I, I really, are you, are you like kidding me? I mean, come on, man. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, who would do that? No one would do that. No one in their right mind would put up the plans before they do it. So why did he do it? And the answer has to be that uh, there, there is something going on that we can't quite figure out, and it's, it's all part of some kind of script, and uh, you know. And the thing is that <clears throat> that it's it's actually to me, and maybe it's just me, and not anybody else. But to me, the world is looking more and more like a play, more and more like a script. Uh, every day it gets worse, and uh, once you realize that you're watching a kind of a, a play. Uh, kind of a, a fake drama being put out, what, whatever the subject is, whether it's, it's Sandy Hook or gun control or um, the uh, uh, what's going on in North Korea, uh, you you can almost see that the, the, where the next page is going and where the next chapter is going, and once you know that, you can kind of just see where it's all going, and it's pretty obvious that you know they're heading us towards a. Uh, what we have going on here in the United States today is a simultaneous thing of two things. One is that the um, illegal immigration has brought in the drug cartel, the Mexican drug cartel. They're now all the way up into Chicago and Detroit and New York. This is the most violent gang on earth, almost a ritualistic uh, uh, sense of uh, ceremony within their murder and uh, beheading. And now they're in our country. Okay, that is a known fact that's been reported. But simultaneous to this uh, very disturbing event is the fact that they're trying to take our guns away. So we're simultaneously being taken over, uh, could possibly be taken over by the drug cartels that have taken over Mexico. At the same time, they're going to take any chance of us having a defense against these guys. 
Well, these are the same guys that uh, killed a mother whose son had been in Oaxaca, had been accidentally killed by the drug gang. She went in front of the uh, town hall in Oaxaca protesting a few years ago against the gangs, and they shot her 60 times. So these guys are not fooling around, and uh, they're headed our way. And it's a very disturbing development. I've been following the the gangs for about 12 years now, and uh, I am totally convinced that the drug cartels are behind the uh, the bid for uh, uh, open borders uh, with Mexico. It has nothing to do with tolerance for the Mexican people or anything. It's the best way that they can move drugs back and forth across the border without getting caught. Right, and of course there hasn't been a lot of care or attention placed upon the border for, well, decades now. So no, this, uh, this has been done on purpose to... Uh, to uh, to uh, destroy America, I, I thought we just have to come to grips with that fact that the people that are doing this don't want us around anymore. They want us to full, be folded into some larger plan. And since America is filled with all the renegades of of of, of the people of Earth uh, who've all come here, or they're the, the sons and daughters or progeny of of renegades, uh, we're a very serious problem. And when you add that. When you add that, uh, the fact that uh, that with the guns and the fact that we're, um, whether they like it or not, the United States is still a very spiritual country, uh, that also worries them, and they don't like that. They're, the powers that be don't want us to have a spiritual life, which is why I'm so adamant against the New World Order. It is not because I'm anti-socialist or anti-communist or any of that. It's because I know my history, and I know that the very first thing that these buggers do when they come into a country is they kill anybody who has a spiritual life. And it doesn't matter whether it was the Buddhists and the uh, um, the Qigong uh, uh, temples yeah, in China or what they did to the Orthodox Christians in Russia, That's what right. they did to the Sufis. Uh, it's just, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't countenance. Because in the end, Marxism is a uh, anti-spiritual philosophy. It's a pro-materialist philosophy, a philosophy that says that all problems can be solved in the material world, and a, spir- a spiritual being knows that that is utter BS, that, that you're not here to solve the problems of the material world. You're here to solve your spiritual problems. Right. I, I completely agree uh, wholeheartedly. And one of the things that I've been tracking, because I, I, I'm really fascinated by the sign Aquarius and the whole notion of the Aquarian age. And I've done a lot of work on this on, on, on my website and have noticed that when there's great social upheaval or there are characters that are promulgating this social upheaval, Aquarius is very prominent in the uh, aspect of the time or the individual during that time. In fact, the, the Bolshevik Revolution took place when Uranus was in Aquarius. And oh, what yeah. I, I think they're doing, Jay, is I think that this is very sophisticated on some level, is that they are they do want to eliminate a spiritual existence and a spiritual life, but what they want to give us is the simulacra of a spiritual experience. You know, so exactly. They, they give us this plastic new age, right? Yeah. Which is a lot of, uh, of, of, of shine, and it's, and, but, but there's not a lot of substance to it. And, and wrapped up in that is this so-called you know, concept of tolerance that is kind of the fulcrum of this, you know, what I would call the false dialectic of the new age. And this is what they're being given, people are being given, so it doesn't appear as though their spirituality is being taken away. Uh, a great example of that is, of course, the uh, mega hit, The Secret. And The, the Secret is, is, of course, a documentary which purports to say that, you know, you manifest your reality, but the, which you do. But what the way that it's presented in The Secret is in the, old, uh, is a, in the absolute most materialist way that this kind of power, this magical ability could possibly be presented. So you're not, you're not supposed to use this incredible ability that each human is born with <clears throat> to um, manifest peace or manifest no hunger or manifest uh, 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 
a world of beauty. Now, that's not what you're supposed to use your power for, according to the secret. You're supposed to use your power to buy a McMansion. And, and, and this is the ultimate, this is the end of the New Age. The secret was the end. It was the knife in the back. It was the, it was the absolute proof that the New Age had gone full circle and come back to the things that it, it had, when it was born, that it had rejected, which was materialism. And it had now come all the way back to where the only thing that's really important is using this ability to get, you know, sex and, and, and a big house. And uh, uh, when I saw The Secret and I saw the people go ooing and aahing in the theater, how ar- marvelous this was, I wanted to vomit. I mean, I really did. And, 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 and so the new age is over and the new edge is here. And uh, uh, we, we, these, this false uh, spirituality that they're foisting on us through the new age, uh, tolerance, is, you know, tolerance is not... Uh, letting everybody just do what they want. That's not tolerance. Tolerance is allowing each person to find their spiritual path. That's the only thing that's important. So if you're going on and on about something that's material, you're missing the point. Yeah, I completely agree. What's interesting, too, for me along those lines is that you, ha- you Obama, as kind of the... Um, the figurehead for what I would call this this new uh, false Aquarian age or the simulacra of the Aquarian age. Because on one hand, you, there are groups of people that are you know new age you know kind of classic new age Marinites who you know who firmly believe in Obama as this you know this kind of mixed race avatar you know it assuages a lot of their white guilt. There's a lot going on you know. Oh, yeah. In that, in, in you know, in in Obama as cipher from that direction, and then for, and then he's got another a foot in another world with Jay Z and Beyonce and kind of this you know a luminist hip hop um, you know sort of spirituality and symbolism that's coming up from the streets. It's a very popular you know through through that world. So he's kind of in the middle of both of these vectors coming together to to bridge. You know, again, this, what I would call this false new age. He is, and, you know, um, there's, you know, nothing real about Obama. Not his name, not uh, where he came from. Uh, Everything that he says to us, in, in my point of view, everything that Obama says to us, he's really doing exactly the opposite. So when he tells us that he's trying to uh, make sure that the, uh, the middle class stays intact, but if you look at what he's doing, he's doing everything he can to destroy the middle class. And the uh, same thing with every single aspect of everything he touches. I know people get upset with me because I'm very critical of Barack Obama. Because, and the reason I'm critical of him is because there's really nothing there. That he has no resume. He never really ever held a job. He worked a couple months at a Baskin Robbins in Hawaii, but other than that, he's never held a job. He's never really lived in the real world. Uh, nobody at Columbia remembers him. He's, he went to Columbia for for two years and studied political science. Yet there's no political science major that went to school with him at the time that remembers him. There's just an article in the uh, um, Jerusalem Post uh, about how not one. Israeli who was going to Columbia University uh, uh, at the time of Obama. This is when Obama was going to Israel. Remembers him. I mean, there's like 45 Israelis were attending Columbia University, and not one remembers him. Uh, uh, the Black Student Association uh, reports that there was about 43 black students at Columbia at the time. None of the other black students remembers their fellow black student, Barack Obama. And the whole thing is just really weird and bizarre and uh my opinion is is that he uh, um a very interesting uh, documentary will back me up it's on Netflix it's called Weather Underground and it's about Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn and my feeling is is that uh that when the Weather Underground went underground really went underground in 1974 uh and they were underground for about 6 years uh, and we know from an FBI informant that, that they were meeting and doing heavy organizing. I believe that they set Obama up at that time. 
and they they had infiltrated the educational system, and they created they they had him for exactly the reason that you were just enunciating, because he was a volatile cocktail with feet in several worlds, uh, uh, several worlds that they could unite with one archetype, and uh, the from the ghettos to the uh, slurbs, and um, from the slums to the slurbs, and uh, and 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 that's why he was chosen. And uh, he's a red diaper baby. His parents were, um, his mom was a, a Marxist. It was everyone in, at the high school at, uh, in Seattle said that she was a Marxist. And so he was a red diaper baby, and, and he, was, uh, he was groomed this whole time. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you get to all sorts of things about Obama, and it just gets stranger and stranger. And so there's nobody there. He's even in a more empty suit than, than George W. Bush was. There's really disconcerting how he's able to and the media is his lapdog and they will not call him out on anything apparently it's a form of magic or it seems to me it's a form of it magic is when he I says guess. i'm here to help the middle class and then does the exact opposite it's it's a, it's, it's crowley esque in some ways you know it's like it's casting a spell you know you say you're going to do one thing but then you do the opposite thing yeah, it, and and for those of us who from the beginning have been able to see through it, um, it's frustrating. I'll tell you, uh, you know, because people are completely mesmerized, and uh, you know, I, I won't watch him anymore. I, if he does a speech and I'm going to listen to it, then I'll do it on the radio because he he's doing NLP um, and, and on you, and uh, it, he he's a master at it. He's as good as Bill Clinton, maybe better. And so I, you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't think he's going to quit the presidency. I think he's going to be at least a three-termer, if not longer. And I don't know how he's going to pull it off. But so far, he has been able to pull off everything. So, I mean, if you told me a year ago that he was going to be able to pull off this gun control thing, I would have said no way. Uh, but with the brilliance of the Sandy Hook Theater, uh, we can now say, well, you know, he, uh, this guy can pull a false flag and get anything he wants. So let's talk about that for just a moment. Um, there's a there's a guy out there you may know his name, Ed Chiarini. He has a website, Well Aware One. He's got this theory that the people uh, in important positions play multiple roles. Some of them are actual actors you know, that we would know from places like Saturday Night Live or Second City TV. Uh, and there, some, of the, some of the matches that he comes up with are interesting for sure. There are others, like Joe Biden is Jimmy Page, that I yeah. can't really wrap my head around. <laughs> you know, do you, do you know about him, and what do you think about I do, him? yeah. Um, you know, he's a, he's a guy who... You know, I think he got he he found some interesting evidence early on. And then he he got way in over his head, and now he's uh, you know threatening to look like a complete whack job. So I mean, it happens to us. But you know, when you get into this stuff and you start seeing it, there are some very definite um, odd things between the Greenberg family, for instance, and some of the people involved in Sandy Hook. And so I'm sort of on the fence. I think he's he's right. They they are using actors. I know they are, because um, I've had actors tell me. I know that the the guy on 9/11 who said that oh the plane flew into the building, you know, on TV. The plane flew into the building, and then the oil or the gas dribbled down through the floors, causing everything to become engulfed in flames and melted all the steel beams, and then the building came down. You know, this is like within 10 minutes of the building coming down. Right. This guy with the hat on is like giving a complete analysis of 9-11 uh, that was later used by the media. And who is that guy? Well, it turned out he was a SAG, a member of SAG, and we, somebody traced him down. So we know they're doing it. So, the, you know, the, yeah, I, I would say that there are actors being involved. I haven't cracked the Sandy Hook nut yet. I've been working on it since the day it happened. And at first I was like, oh, okay, there's nothing here. But then the more I got into it, the more I realized there was just nothing but strangeness all over it. And I want to say here right now, I believe that children died at Sandy Hook. I don't believe that if someone had planned this out in some conspiracy that they would care so much about the children that they would fake their deaths. I just cannot buy that. Not with the people that I'm talking about anyway. 
So I don't know what they did with them. I don't know what's going on there. I just know that there is some seriously weird stuff that's being covered up, including two guys running uh, uh, in the woods right behind the school at the same exact time. They do a classic military split where one goes in one direction, one goes in the other. The guy that goes right, there's only one cop chasing him. The guy that goes right has the same body type as Rhodia, the guy who owned the car that was in the parking lot. And uh, I believe there was two guys running through the I know there was two guys running through the woods, but they're only copping to one. And why are they doing that? And who was the other guy and where did he go? Well, if you look on a Google map of where they were running, you can see that the direction they were running was straight towards the National Guard Armory right nearby. Uh, so I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know who the nuns were. I, I want to know about the purple van that was pulled over with, with, uh, um, with two people from, uh, the, from the village in New York and a, a man, quote, man dressed as a nun, which is what the cop said when he pulled the van over. Um, you know, it's just like a, a lot of strange things going on. Uh, Robbie Parker uh, uh, laughing and smiling on the day his daughter died. And, and Gene Rosen, who can't seem to get a tear out of his eyes. You know, who, who are these people? What's going on here? And yeah, so I can't answer anymore. There, there, I mean, there is just so much weirdness associated with it. Robbie Parker was just here in Texas a couple days ago. He threw out the first pitch. No way. Um, yeah, at the Rangers uh, Astros home opener. So he's he's making public appearances. He threw up the first pitch. I mean, I just uh, if I was a dad, I mean, I am a dad, and if something like that happened, I, there's no way I'm running around throwing the first pitch at a baseball. No game. way. Wow. If you, if you could, I'm going to look that up on the internet. That's pretty amazing. So Robbie Parker's using it to. Uh, oh, this is amazing. I, I I don't know what to tell you. I'm not even sure Robbie Parker lives in Newton anymore. Uh, a lot of people have uh, that had children that were killed have moved or put their homes up for sale. Interestingly enough, a lot of the people that were uh, had children killed at Sandy Hook. Um, the real estate survey shows that an awful lot of people decided to move to Newton uh, in uh, in 2010. Um, uh, kind of a beyond a coincidence, the number of people that moved there then had their children killed and are now moving out. Um, you know, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I, I, I don't think that they're involved, but I don't know. I know that they each had a policeman assigned to them. Uh, which strikes me as strange, you know. Does the Newton to Connecticut police force have that many police on it? That they can, you know, 26 families, each had a cop? Who, I mean, how many police are in the Newton police force, sure. really? Sure. You start adding and, and thinking about things, and the, then you find out that the uh, the prop director for uh, The Dark Knight Rises lived in Newton, and, of course, we know about the references to Sandy Hook inside The Dark Knight Rises, he was killed in a car accident in April last year. Uh, just like, what? Yeah, and then you've got uh, Suzanne Collins, the author of The Hunger Games from San Diego. Right. And then Bruce Jenner, who is this surrogate uh, for this mind control family called the Kardashians, uh, which is, uh, who's also from Sandy Hook. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, they're making their big play. And here's what's going on. Here's, I finally concluded uh, what, what's really happening here. And I think that actually, I've, uh, from what I can detect on the Internet, that this seems to be a kind of an idea that's beginning to sweep over the alternative movement all at the same time. And that is that 9-11, Sandy Hook, GMOs, chemtrails, uh, poisons in the food, Roundup, uh, 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 Fukushima, all these things are uh, connected. And the way that they are connected is this. They know that, and they've known, and the Cross of Hende, my work on the Cross of Hende proves this, that there was an awakening coming at this point in time. And they are doing all of the things I just mentioned to dampen the awakening, to make sure that we stay stupid. And, and fluoride in the water, I want to also add. And uh, that is what I think is going on. I think all of these things are designed to uh, stop the, the, the awakening that they so fear. Yes, absolutely. Are you there? I am. 
Okay, yeah, there was just a, there was a dramatic pause at the end there. I didn't know where you went. Yeah, no, I I completely concur. And yeah, you could and you could throw in ELFs and stupid yep. TV and and the, the, the these so-called reality shows and I mean you know everything the economy you know the the, the yep. destruction of the dollar and the ability they crash the economy right when the awakening was yep. going to start. And they do that on purpose. And it's all becoming kind of obvious. And it's sort of funny to see, like, well, you can just see it across the line. I don't want to name any names. So, you know, some of the more fam famous people that are writing nowadays about what's going on, you can just see they're all going, aha, all at the same time. Like, oh, you finally get it. You know, why didn't the Enlightenment happen in 2012? And, you know, then I think we, we know now. And so the, the struggle is going to be even even harder now because we're fighting against chemical agents and uh, as mind control games and and you know threats of nuclear war and they're doing everything they can to keep us in this constant state of fear because then we're useless to uh, for the awakening and uh, I for one refuse to be fearful but I can see the deleterious effects it's having on on my fellow compatriots, and it's, it's really starting to piss me off. Right. Well, the health, the health issue is a really big deal because a lot, of, a lot of people are struggling, uh, especially because of all the barium and the aluminum yep. uh, in the air. That's a that's a big one. Do you have anybody that, that talks about this and, and what people can do to to alleviate some of these really dramatic symptoms from from the spraying? Well, you know. Um, yeah, I have, and I have never, I have not yet received a good answer, which worries me. And uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, here in Colorado, they just spray all the time. I mean, it's just terrible what they do here, and um, I have no idea why, uh, outside of trying to kill us. But I've also heard another theory about chemtrails, which I kind of really like. Not that I like. I mean, I just I agree with. And that is that once you have these uh, barium and aluminum inside you, which, of course, if you're breathing, you're going to have it in you, is they can watch you now uh, from satellites. You're now um, electrically uh, conductible, and they can uh, watch you uh, much easier. And that may be what they're doing but uh, on, on another level. But basically what they're doing is it, it's, it's metallic poisoning slow kill, soft kill, whatever you want to call it. And we're right on the edge of this thing. And if we don't wake up and do something, uh, we may find our, all of ourselves on the uh, short end of a long stick. So what can people do? Because there is a fair amount of awareness, especially around chemtrails. And, and as, as far as that goes with the media, I mean, that's just a, that's a dead letter office, man. Well, we have to give up on the media. They're useless. Uh, they are not reporting anything anymore. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we have to uh, we have to uh, do something, and uh, I don't know exactly what, but uh, we're going. The hardest thing that we as a race here at this moment in time have to deal with is, and uh, it, it, it will solve all of the problems we've been talking about, is how do we get rid of the criminal cabal and until someone comes up with an answer as to how we get rid of these guys um, and, and we and we and we have to do it in an asymmetric way we can't just go in and kill them that would not work we have to find something that some way for them to give up the reins of power uh, without uh, without threatening them and because uh, otherwise we're just as bad as they are and uh, that's the big thing that we're going to come to grips with over the next 10 years. And they know that we know. They just did a survey. Pew Research just did a survey. came out yesterday or the day before. Over 50%, and I think it's 51%, but it's over 50% of the American people either know or suspect that an evil cabal called the New World Order is trying to take over the world. Now, that's huge um, that that many people could suspect that, that a minority of Americans thinks that that's a dumb idea. Uh, in other words, we're in the majority now, and they know that. And so they see that, and that nothing scares them more. And they've been flying under the radar for a long, long time. 
and now they're not, and it's mostly because of the internet and brave people like David Icke and a lot of people. And uh, so the, the now they had to pull the switches on, on 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 how to dampen the the awakening. But I don't think any of that's going to work. It's just going to make us all sick. We're still going to be awake, though. So we have to get rid of this criminal cabal. Maybe we can have them under house arrest. They can't leave their house for the rest of their lives, uh, take all their money away, give them enough to live on, be comfortable, and then that's it until they die. And then, you know, and once we get the cabal out of the way, then we can order the chemtrail spraying to stop. We can outlaw GMOs. We can, you know, all the rest of the things that are being done. And I think that's kind of the, we have to get the cancer first. And uh, yeah. playing around with, with the symptoms is just not going to make it. Well, I came up with this new concept. It's called the, instead of the ascension, it's called the dissension. And, and basically it's about all the people that you're talking about being so heavy in their in their consciousness that they literally just get swallowed up by the earth, and then they just that would go, be nice. Yeah, you know the sinkholes uh, like, take them all away. The dissension. Yeah, I like that. Let's pray for the dissension. Yeah, you the know? dissension. <laughs> It's like, take them away, go away. Uh, you know, and the thing is, uh, unless you know these people, and I do know them, the, 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 the psychopaths on top, they think they're doing everything with just the, uh, you know, complete and utter compassion for the human race. They think they're saving the earth. They're, they're, they're seriously uh, 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 sick people. And uh, so they don't think they're doing bad things. And if you do arrest them, put them under house arrest, they're for sure going to think it's totally unfair. Uh, but you know that's the way it goes. You know we st- we can't we can't we have to play with reality here. We can't we can't we're not living in a fantasy. And and these people, whether for good intentions or not, they're killing us, and they're killing our children. And we need to do something about it. And that's a real reason I took the position at Guy TV, by the way, it was because I didn't know what else to do. I finally had enough financial resources to get the word out thinking and still thinking that you know the way out is to show people the connectivity between us all between us and nature uh, and that we're truly spiritual beings and then we can kind of rise above this nightmare madness and but it will also give us the courage because we will then know that we don't really die so we don't have to fear death we'll then have the courage to uh put these people where they belong and that's mm-hmm. what we have to do and i don't you know i, I assume that people who talk like me are going to start disappearing soon um and so you know i'm taking every opportunity i can to say this before they try to stop it however their power i think is slipping and um that's why they're doing this this is a these are the desperate acts of a cornered dog mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's interesting that you uh, brought up a that that uh, documentary on the Weather Underground, which I really urge people to see on Netflix. I've seen that uh, documentary, and I actually just wrote some uh, horoscopes and put them up on the website. And I, and I mentioned that documentary and the Weather Underground, and their their belief system, their raison d'etre was that it didn't matter if a few people, a few innocent people died, because the uh, the, the common good was. Would, would would supersede that? Would, would, it would override that, right? So it yep. gets back to your your notion about psychopaths um, believing in what they do. Because if they kill a few billion people, they're really doing the greater good of service, right? I mean, they, that's how it's right. They are. Yeah. In fact, in that movie, if you watch, uh, in particular, well, Ber- Bernadine Dorn can't hide her anger. And the fact that she's a psychopath, so she's not in it very much. But Bill Ayers, he's really figured out the game. And so his interview is extremely interesting. This guy's going out of his way to prove to you that he's not a violent psychopath. He's got a little earring. He's got his little fuzzy sweater on. He's talking in a very slow voice and mellow. And it seems so reasonable when you're looking at him. And, you know, if you didn't know who he really was and what he has been recorded as saying uh, in private and what he did to people and the people that he killed, um, you know, you would think that he was just a, a sweet little college professor who, you know, was accused of something malicious. But it's really important to understand that none of the Weather Underground people ever went to prison for very long. They stayed a few weeks, got out on bail, and never went back. 
and all of their parents were blue bloods, every single one of them. There wasn't one poor person in the Weather Underground. They were all wealthy, um, and, uh, and none of their parents ever disowned them. So then you have to ask yourself, well, who was financing these guys, and how could they go for years and years and years without working and and having, you know, uh, hiding and, 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 and doing all the things that they did? And the answer is, is that they were financed by someone above them, and uh, they were doing their work. And that's the only answer I can come up with. Yep. Uh, yep. And, and, and everything that's going on right now is a direct result of what occurred in the 1970s inside Bill Ayers' head. I have no doubt about that. I have no doubt that Bill Ayers wrote uh, Dreams of My Father for Barack Obama. Uh, the first book, Dreams of My Father, is like Hemingway, and the second book is like a cartoon writing. Uh, so it's like, well, what's going on here? And, of course, the press doesn't even look. Then there's the whole question of his birth certificate, Barack's, that is. And... Um, the question that you know rises well why would you know assuming that everybody in the white house is is pretty smart why didn't they just put a screenshot of the birth certificate up why did they stick up the entire adobe illustrator layer files so that you could go through the files and see that it's forged why would the white house do that that's a question that i can't answer it's it's mind boggling is it is it that they they are so um, so unafraid of being caught that they can put out the entire Adobe Illustrator files and anyone can look through and see that it's a fraud? Uh, 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 or was, did somebody hack WhiteHouse.gov and put up the fake birth certificate and then once it was up, Obama couldn't say anything? That That's a possibility. And so you begin looking and you, you see sometimes you can see that there's like a war going on among the elites and occasionally the war leaks out and uh, um, that's what I see with Sandy Hook I see that to me it looks like somebody knew that it was going to happen before it happened and they were against it somebody in the intel world or military whoever put this out and they're the ones who put up uh, that Adam Lanza died on December 13th. You know, you know about this, right? Or that the, the memorial page was put up three days before the shooting for Soto, the teacher. And, and, and so what is this? And, you know, the, the, oh, well, you know, the, the Google doesn't get their dates right. That's not true. Google does get their dates right. Um, one thing you can rely on with a computer is to pretty much get the dating right. Yeah. And uh, so I think somebody's running around behind the scenes kind of trying to throw a monkey wrench into some of these things that are going on. Yeah, I, I yeah, it, it, that feels right. Of course, we had the the Red Cross um, benefit yeah. page set up ahead of time as well. So there were at least yeah, three. and also the the teacher or the uh, reporter for the Newton B. She's walking down the street, and all of a sudden, this woman comes up to her and says, "Hey, I'm the principal of the school, and you know, it was a it was a kid that went to school there that came and and shot everybody." And then, of course, she went and reported it, and it got reported. The whole national press picked it up, and guess what? The principal had died. So yeah. who was that person? The yeah. Newton B. apologized for the story, for running it, but they never explained who the person was that told the reporter all this. Yeah, that, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things, I think, from your asymmetric perspective that could make sense is that th these people, they can't do anything without their underlings carrying out their orders, right? And, yep. and and the way that you get to the underlings is you offer them a better deal. Yep. And I don't know what that better deal is. You know, two thousand years ago it was Christianity, right? Yeah, right. But I don't know what that better deal is now. But if you want to, if you want to, if we want to pull pull it off or stop what's going on, you got to get those people to stop doing what they're doing. And then at that point, the whole thing just basically grinds to a halt. Yeah, and that's where this is going to go. I mean, eventually the corruption is going to make the whole thing fall apart. We're going to be invaded by somebody who sees our weakness, and uh, we're all going to be very, very sorry that we went down the path we went down. So we got to hope that we can wake everybody up to prevent all that stuff we're talking about from happening. That's really the goal, is to get everybody awake. Get everybody awake and aware, understand who they are, where they are, who's running the show, and how they have to be stopped. And then the, the, the enlightenment can begin. 
I really believe that. I really believe that there's going to be a, an enlightenment, a great awakening, but we've got to get the criminal cabal out of the way. They don't want it to happen because they think that we're going to be just like them and kill them. And we're not. We can't be like them. If we are do that, if we make that choice, then you know we're just as bad. Absolutely. Well, listen, Jay. I know you got a, a big day ahead of you there with production and all kinds of stuff, professional stuff with Guy. M. So, if you want to hear more, uh, Jay Widener, there's a uh, an actual video there of him on 2012 that he did. That's on Guy M. and a host of other content that you can find there over at Guy M. as well. And you can go there, uh, Guy M T V uh, slash Widener, and we'll we'll put that link up on the the show page as well. Jay, thank you for coming on the show. Always. Hey, it's great, Robert, as usual. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, you take good care. Okay. You too, man. Thanks. Bye. We are living in a computer programmed reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed, and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present, deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words. I submit that these impressions are valid and significant. And I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off.